You are now watching a Lucky Penny Shop product feature. Here is a complete video of a maker set from start to finish. If you want to skip ahead to specific points in the video, then check the description below for skip times. Enjoy! Hey, it's Lucky Penny Shop and it's time for the fortune cookie maker. So many people requested this that I have completely lost track. So, shout outs, not going to happen. But leave a comment below and I'll thank you down there, okay? So, took us uh, took us a while to actually find one of these without having to pay full retail. We went on eBay, finally got this one, and uh, looks complete in the box. That's what they said. It has the mixes in there. You can buy extra mixes, but we're going to just use what's there. Let me flip the box around. As you can see, you're decorating, you're making happy kids again. You know, I like to always point out the happy kids because if they're going to have fun, I want to have fun, right? I say that in a lot of videos, but yeah, I want to have fun. And I want to experiment and give it a shot and see how it works. So here we go. It says, making fortune cookies is easy. Makes up the 12 fortune cookies. Prepare and mix. Roll and cut after microwaving. Make your cookie. Decorate. And there below that is the contents of everything in the box. So we have to review all that when we unbox it. And then the refill packs. Now we didn't get any of those. But they are out there. And I have seen them on eBay. And they're not cheap either. So let's see. The next part now is actually taking it out of the box. So let's do that. So let's see, piece by piece. Here's all the packs. Like I said, they were all in there. When we bought it on eBay, they said all the packs were there. Here's the actual maker, all still in plastic, nice and sealed. And then a couple more pieces, the rolling pin, and then another box of stuff. Looks like some kind of lid. So the box is empty. We'll push that off to the side. So now usually I break away here and then get it all out of the plastic so you don't hear all this in the, in the microphone, right? Unless you like that sound. I don't know. Some people might. So let me take it all out of the plastic, lay it out, and get the instructions, and we'll go from there. All right, that took about five minutes to get out of the bags. And I have no idea what all the parts are. I know what a rolling pin is, and I know what a spatula is. Not sure what the ring is yet. Hopefully that's to cut. And uh, these things, don't know yet. Okay, it's all new to me, just learning as I go. I know what the fortunes are. There they are. Let me read one here. Let's see what the first fortune is. Hopefully it's good luck for this video. A dream you have will come true. Ooh, that's good to know. Very good to know. And then there's three cookie mixes, three icings. They say pink, purple, and brown. And then some sprinkles, all right? We got that, we got our mixing bowl and our instructions and then this blue sheet here, which is what you're gonna use to roll out. It says right here, roll this wide and then you're probably gonna cut. So we'll know for sure. There's this plastic piece here, not sure yet. And then this lid here, which is kind of neat the way they made it. It's colorful, it looks fun, but it looks like you're pressing and you're doing something with this machine and you have to have the lid on probably to make it work. And we'll figure that out too. It's all part of the process of learning. So we're gonna do that. And then the instructions. So you see, tells you right here everything. Three cookies, three icing sprinkles, the utensils, so you have the measuring tube, which we have, which is this right here. All right. And this does require a microwave, the drying tray. This is the drying tray. Now I know what that is. And then these insert bars, that's what that is now. See, I could have just read all this, but I'm learning as I go. And then the cookie cutter. Ooh, I guess that one right. So scan here for a fortune cookie demo. No, check this video out. Because it's going to be probably the longest demo ever made for the fortune cookie maker. And here's all the steps. Empty cookie mix, pack it in the bowl, fill measuring tube to the top with water, mix, uh, under adult supervision, microwave high for 10 seconds, mix dough with spatula for 10 seconds. Oh, I might as well just get started. When dough is warm to touch, knead by hand until smooth, roll dough as thin as possible. All right, that's it. Let's just go for it. So, let me clear off everything I don't need. Come in with the water and the mixes, and we'll get going. Hold on. All right, I'm all set. I want to let you know everything was washed. Super hot water, soap, and a sponge. Now, I don't use the hard abrasive side of a sponge on anything I wash in plastic. It's either a soft cloth or a soft sponge, because those abrasive ones really scratch everything up. 
and uh, it just makes it look uh, horrible. Marks all over it. So now they want me to fill the water in my little tube here to the top, it said. All right. So that's done. And then it wants one packet of my mix. So let's get that in there. Cutting that with my scissors so no one worries about me cutting myself. Everybody worries. So now that's in there. Okay. It says do not add extra water, so you got to be careful there. So now they want it to fill to the top and then pour it in. All right. And then it says just mix. Mix, mix, mix. So we'll do that. So they want it mixed together and then you want to use to mix it by hand it said for two minutes so they just want to get it started very much like most doughs you know you got to get the ingredients incorporated and get the consistency pretty similar before you go to the next step So firmly pressed now, so I'm just going to clean it off, get it in there, okay, and just keep going. Now it said you can have an adult help you with this. And this is just pre-microwave, so once we get this pressed, there we go. And we'll just keep working it, keep working it. Keep dropping on the table. Keep working it and keep dropping it on the table. It's not going to detract us. You just got to keep moving along. Okay, so now it's really starting to get thick. Pressing, pressing, pressing. I think we're good. So now we need to take this to the microwave and microwave it for 10 seconds on high. Now we're going to come back and do the next step, okay? So let's go take it to the microwave. All right, so we're in the microwave. Well, I'm not in the microwave. The camera is in the microwave. There's the dough. It says 10 seconds, so let's do that. Here we go. <whistles> 10 seconds, let's bring it upstairs. All right, all set to go now. That microwave did heat it up, even though it was only a short 10 seconds. It said mix for another 10 seconds till it's warm to the touch, and then put it on your mat, and you can knead it more, and then roll it out. So let's do that. It shows them kneading it in your hand, kind of like this, till it's smooth. And then it says roll dough as thin as possible. So let's get this smooth. definitely not smooth. If you could see the dough, uh, it's close. I mean, you can kind of get a sense of smoothness just by feeling it. It's very much like making pizza dough. Pizza dough, when you know you got the dough right, it's very smooth. It doesn't tear apart easily. So we're just going to keep mixing. And you can kind of see it now. It's starting to look smoother, right? We don't need our mixing bowl anymore. I'm looking forward to the decorating part. Well, actually, you know me. I'm looking forward to the eating part. I still don't think it's 100% there. 
It's much better. Got the rolling pin ready. We're close to having fortune cookies. No, it's there. It's almost there. You can just feel it. It's not as gritty in your fingers. It's smoother to the touch. I want to say it's very much like Play-Doh. If you played with Play-Doh, that's kind of the feeling you want. You want that smooth texture and it's really close to Play-Doh. Okay. There's no exact time there. It just says, you know, when you're uh, when you're ready. Now it doesn't have us putting us anything down on the mat for stickiness, so we'll see how that is. How's that look to you? Good? Well, all right. I think it looks good to me, too. So let me just start with a, a roll. So when we roll out, we know we're getting a that kind of shape. Yeah, I think it looks good. So we'll do that, and then we can come by in the other direction now. Start spreading it out. going to keep moving the mat. Got the camera there. It gets in the way. So we'll get that edge set. Okay. It's going to keep going. Let's do this though. Let's center this a little bit more. Okay. We're close. You can sense the closeness. Whoa, that was cool. It's a very slippery rolling pin. Now we just got to get a little tighter to the edges. Now this pin, obviously, is going to only let you get so low on the dough. So we're going to have to probably make, let's just see when we cut. It's actually not bad. Let me just do this here. Unstick it. Okay. Yeah, let's just take some of this off to one side. We're making an adjustment here, folks. Why? Because the rolling pin only gets so thin. See? It's not going to hurt anything. I'm okay with that. It's not the end of the world. And if you're doing it with kids, you know, don't make a big deal of it. Just say, hey, time for a little adjustment here. There we go. That looks good. So you can only get so thin with the dough. All right. So there we are. Now they show two or three being cut. So we could actually probably go a little bit more to make three. So let's just test it. See, we'll do this here like this because I think that's going to be better to make three nice shapes. All right, let's see. One, two, three. Let's give it a shot. It says move quickly. Don't let your dough dry out. So we're going. We're going as quick as we can. I don't know why it needed to be that wide. One, two. Let's take some of this here. And just add it here for number three. I think we could squeeze it in a little bit more. We don't want dry dough. Definitely don't want dry dough. Okay, so we squeeze three. It's our first time, too. You know, next time I might roll it differently. You just don't know. Okay, so there's three. And this is what was left over. Think you can get a fourth? You might be able to, but I don't think so. We're going to push that off to the side. So next is to bring in the machine. Okay, so need the machine. You're going to need your drying rack. You're going to need your fortunes. And then these pieces here, they called them the insert bars. See, they get slid into that section there. So you're lifting this. They show it lifting all the way, but 
that only goes that far. Let's see. No, the picture is different than what you see. So it looks like it goes this way. Okay, so that's in there now. Then you're going to take your fortune cookie dough. And we show it like this, okay? And then you put your fortune inside there and lay it in. All right? And you're going to lay that in there. Make it even as possible. Now here's where you put the lid on. Now I've never done this before, so we'll test the number one. And you put the lid on and push down, okay? So here we go. All right. So now they said pinch the ends. So it's a little uneven there, but we're okay. You could take this out now. See, it's a little uneven, but we'll just adjust. Pinching the ends. I didn't like that one. But you get the idea, okay? Every time I pinch one, it goes the other way. So let's put that on the drying rack. So you see the drying rack here? So we'll set that one there for now. So it kind of goes over the over the edges there. Let's get another one in there. I think I'm getting it now, see? I think I'm going to match this one up a little better. Yes, I did. I'm going to put in my piece. Let's just move that to the other side. That makes more sense. Put this on. There we go. Pinch. That one came out better. See, you get better as you go. And every time you do it, you probably think, all right, let me try this or let me do that. Okay, so we'll put that on our drying rack. So we have two drying. Let's make the third one now. Now that was the one that uh, I had to adjust with the dough, but you know, you run with things. No matter what it is in life, you let it get to you, it's going to ruin everything. All right, this time I'm just going to lay this in here now. There we go. I'm going to put my piece in. Okay. I might have to adjust them on my drying rack. You see, that was my broken dough one, but we're going to make it work anyway. So let's bring these in here because now they have to dry. I think they show them this way. Let's see. <laughs> Pinch the edges closed and place in the drying rack for 15 minutes. Wow, 15 minutes. So they show them kind of sitting like this. Yeah, definitely goofy the way they show it. Let's do it that way. I like that way. This way we can get them all on there. Look at the picture. That drying rack is a totally different looking drying rack than the one we're actually using. So I was looking at that going, what is that? It's nothing like that. Why do they do that? I mean, if it confuses me, it's going to confuse a kid, right? Okay, so this is meant to, this one looks kind of weak. I'm going to say that one looks really bad. But, you know, I'm going to decorate it anyway, I don't care. So we're going to let those dry. Now, that takes 15 minutes. And what I might do is make more, now that I know how to do it better. So I'm going to mix up another batch and then decorate, okay? All right, so I mixed that second batch, and now I'm going back to kneading. A couple things I'll do differently now is I'm going to work quicker here. You know, when you're in the video, you're kind of, you know, trying to read the directions, because I'm learning it as I go here. This is nothing that I've done before. I didn't practice. If I practiced, I would probably have done some things different to begin with. But someone who uses it for the first time, and they're watching this video, will say, Oh, I did the same thing the first time. So now, I'm going to knead it quicker, roll it quicker, so that it's softer. Now, my other ones came out all right. Here's one of them that's been drying for a little while. So that one came out nice. Now, the one that I had added dough to, that one, you know, that's a train wreck. But 
still, I'm going to eat it. They decorate it. So remember now, I'm going for like Play-Doh consistency. They show you in your hand just kind of going like that. So that works too. I'm going to work quicker. I've got my three inner pieces there. I'll roll out a little differently. Last time I rolled it into a longer piece. I'm going to keep it a little more like this. Okay. So you can kind of see it's almost there. It's not just there. It kind of has like a crispy texture to it. There's a point where it just becomes really soft. Gotta have strong hands, huh? No, not really. It's not that hard. Now, you could write your own messages, too, you know. You don't have to use the ones I have and just cut them on little pieces of paper. I still don't think it's there. But it's close. I think we're good now. So this time, I'm going to put it down like this. And when I first saw the roller, I didn't think, hey, they only let you go so deep, okay? So I'll use this to get it to our length. And then we'll see if we can get three out of it following their guidelines. I'm not sure if you can squeeze four. So I'm not going to mess around with it. I'm just going to go do my three. One, two, and three. Just barely. Okay. You can probably reuse this and get your fourth if you want. All right, let me get those off to the side. Working quicker now. As you learn it, you get quicker, right? It is softer than the last batch, so that's definitely an improvement. Get the paper centered. Okay. Let's get this turned up a little. see if that sticks. See, it does, no, yeah, well, I don't know. I think you just got to, you know, play with it. Play with it a little more. Okay. And my drying rack is maxed out. So I'm going to move a couple off. They are already starting to get pretty dry. This was the one that got mangled. Let's just get that in there. And when it's on the drying rack is when they say you should pinch it, so... Uh, I've had, you know, we've all had fortune cookies, right? They're never sealed completely. So don't worry about it. Yeah, actually, most of the time, they're just crushed in the bag and you're eating crumbs. Isn't it true? I think the hardest part for me now is just making sure that this piece is perfectly centered. So that does take a little extra time. And then it falls and, you know, you got to make adjustments. I think that last one I put in like four fortunes in it. Someone's going to be really lucky. Oops. Okay. Oh, man. It wasn't laying flat. That's okay. That's okay. Don't worry. 
Just rework it in there. Go this way. There you go. So I'll put it on the drying rack. I'll pinch that one in a second. Make it nicer. But let's get the last one in there. Ooh, that one went in real nice. Now they do have you putting this in first, but it doesn't seem to be making a real difference here to me. Whether it goes in first or last, it didn't hit it or do anything. Want to see that one up close? That one, that one probably came out the, the nicest of them all. It's a little open on the edges, but like I said, isn't that how they come anyway? They do want you to just kind of bring them in a little. I still have to fix that other one. So let's get that out of the way. Let's get this a little easier to see. This one I didn't pinch on here, so let me do that now. And then I have the other ones here. They came out pretty nice, actually. I think they came out nice. So I'll let those dry. This one here was the one that was really messed up. And this one here came out nice. Like it. Just leave it to dry here like this. So what I'm going to do now is uh, clean up and get ready to do the decorating and getting the frosting on there and then eating all right i'm all set it's time for the icing as you can see they're drying nicely on the rack in the back here was the damaged one so i was kind of using that as my reference to see so it is a, it's not what you would think of like a crispy fortune cookie they probably need to dry even longer it's been about 15 minutes but it's time now to do the mixes so i'm going to do the pink and the purple and there's my drying rack see and three milliliters of water. So you can see the three on the side here. It's right there. I know it's hard to see, but it's there. Camera can't focus on that. I'm going to set that down and go to three. All right, so that's one. Let me do that. Let me just measure all the water out. Now they have you put the dry in first, but whoa, too much. Right there is three, a little higher, but not too bad. And then we'll cut open each icing pack. So we'll do the pink first. Put that in here. And it's actually totally white. Okay, so you're not seeing a pink color. So let's mix that one up. Now, it doesn't say pink is a certain flavor. It just says pink icing. So they're going to dry longer because after you put the icing on, you've got to let that dry too. So let's get that cleaned off. All right, let me wipe that on a rag there. So we're set for the second one. This is the purple. The only one I didn't do is the brown. I think I like the color. Looks good. Let's move this stuff out of the way. I think it's affecting the focus on the camera. Alright, so let's mix this one up. It does look purple. So I left my mat out because I think I want to decorate on that mat. It says mix until smooth, do not add more water. So we're not. And then I have a third bowl here for my sprinkles. There's the sprinkles. It says rainbow. Ooh, rainbow sprinkles. All right, they don't give you any system or uh, something to actually spread it on with. So I'm just going to use my spatula and the picture just shows it, you know, on the top. So we're going to do that.
Now, I'm not following any pattern or doing anything super fancy. There's one. Let me wipe this off. All right. Sorry about that. My rag fell, so I had to pick it up. All right, so let's get a pink one in here. Now, as you can see now, it's starting to drip, so let me take a little bit off of this edge here. See? Now, normally, I'm just going to, I'm just going to, I would lick that off, but I'm not going to this time. So let me do a pink one. Get a little closer here. So here's the pink. It's starting to thicken up a little, which is nice. I think I like the side, this side better. I have to tell you, I'm really happy how these turned out. And I think it's a fun kit. It really is. Now, I'm not expecting it to taste like a fortune cookie from the Chinese restaurant. Just not going to have that expectation. Okay. There's another one. So there's two. I got to sprinkle those. Let me get a third one. Let's do a half and half. How's that? Let's mix it up a little. Let's be daring. So I'll do half purple. Okay. And then half pink. So let's leave that there. So now we have the three. Let's take some sprinkles now. So how many of you would just bonge a fortune cookie? Let's do this pink one. So there's all different kinds of decorator kits out there. You can have refill packs in summer for Valentine's Day. Other seasonal packs so you can decorate them differently with different color frostings. So how is that? Now, I'm going to leave those because they just look so nice. And I'm going to take this one here. And I'm going to dip it in the frosting. That's the best part of having the one that got damaged. So I'm going to taste that. It's crumbly. Do I like it? Yes, I do. I do. I do like it. The dough is sweet. It's not crispy. It's more chewy. But overall, the taste is good. Let me um, frost one up with the pink. I'll probably just take one of my other ones apart and eat it. There you go. Put some sprinkles on it. But let me see what my fortune was. I was going to make my fingers and everything messy, but oh well. Oh look, this was the one. Remember I put too many fortunes in. That's funny. My fortune. Go take a rest. You deserve it. Well, thank you. And I'm going to eat this now. See? Now, I've done a lot of maker sets. And I'm going to say this one was one of my favorites. Mainly because it worked great. It was easy to mix, easy to make. And it's tasty. I really do think this is tasty. So here we have the three fortune cookies that I saved. Completed the decorating on them. Thought they looked pretty cool on this plate. You know, if you're making it with the kids and they want to bring it out for dinner for dad. Hint, hint, you know, a little dessert for dad. They can make them, decorate them, and present them. I think it's really neat and fun. So that's what they look like. I hope you enjoyed the video. And thanks to everybody out there that suggested it and said, hey, do the fortune cookie maker. So we did. Leave a comment below. It's really appreciated. 
Wow. Look at that. So colorful. Ooh, they're just a little out of a place there. Okay. And thanks for watching. Later. This video is now over. If you want to see more videos in this series, check the description, search the channel, or click here. And always remember, if you see a lucky penny, pick it up.